I'm here today with Simon King, chiropractor, uh, discussing the up-and-coming proprioceptive muscle testing seminar series he'll be producing in the UK in July. Uh, I believe it's in Cardiff, Manchester, and in Berkhamsted, near London. Simon, welcome. Thank you, Jesse. Nice to talk to you. And yourself. Um, I just want to ask a few questions for people who might be interested in attending these seminars, um, sure. as I was myself. Um, how did you discover the proprioceptive muscle testing? Well, I've been doing AK for oh, more years than I care to remember, and I, I got to diplomat status in uh, ICAK. But even at that level, I found that nobody could give me a reasonable explanation of what made these muscles that we were always finding uh, weak or strong or um, indifferent. And there was no good theory behind it. It was just a collection of techniques. So I went back to the books and I really looked at the physiology of muscle testing and I thought, I wonder if the reflexes that control proprioception actually are what are controlling muscle tone. And when I looked at the possibility that that might be true, I thought, oh, that's an interesting theory. I now need some really difficult cases to test it out on. And lo and behold, the next week, um, this woman came in that couldn't walk and uh, well, could almost walk and she couldn't ride a horse anymore because when she got off the horse she collapsed on the ground unable to stand up um, she was and she'd been like that for 15 years we did all the tests we could for MS or motor neuron disease we couldn't find anything and eventually I thought right if this theory is true I have to be able to find this problem and uh, I solved it in a weekend and she was Absolutely fine for eight years after that, and uh, eight years later she came back and told me she'd played 56 games of tennis in a day, and that was a woman who could hardly walk for 15 years. But I mean, this technique is not just for those uh, kind of obscure cases; it's, it's for everyday practice as well. It's it's for the the bread and butter chiropractic patients as well. Yes, I use it on everything. In fact, I, I don't know how I would ever be without it. It just gives me a, a complete blueprint for how bodies are supposed to work and the thing that I think it does best is it, it changed the way I look at patients and now what I aim for is to create robustness that's my my big thing is that the more robust I can create a patient the more healthy they are going to be and the research bears that out so I always go back to where is the missing link in this patient's robustness where are they M most unable to withstand an outside force and the most uh, applicable outside force that I can apply is muscle testing. So when you get the patient strong or, or robust, how do you know then they, they will be that way uh, indefinitely and, and that you can ensure that they're not going to have some sort of uh, repercussion of their problem? Well, that's just experience. And over the last 13 years, I've I've desperately looked for instances where the theory would not hold and although that and I've never found a case where it doesn't hold now that does not mean that everybody gets better straight away um, there are limitations to our ability and the patient's ability to to do what's necessary but generally all of the exceptions to that rule are easily explainable so I've, I've been yet to disprove the theories that I uh, talk about and teach. And that's really important because in my experience is a lot of these seminars you go to, uh, there are a lot of promises, but at the end of it, it's, it's not many, not, not many of them deliver. And, uh, one of the things I like about your, your seminar series and what, what I've read is that it's based on science. It's not based on a belief system or that it just is the way it is. It's based on hard fact neurology. Can you just explain a bit more about that? Well, everything that I talk about is based in truth in that. And when I say truth, it means no unexplainable exceptions. So we don't use well, I mean, there is enough clinical evidence out there to back up uh, the theories that we garner from the truth of the physiology. Um, I mean, there's lots of evidence now and much more coming out saying that the stronger a person is, the longer they'll live and there's less death from all causes of heart disease and cancer. And so strength is very protective uh, from a health point of view. But what I look at is not... Um, uh, not statistical anomalies. So um, I, I like to think that truth is universal. So I use tr principles that can be applied to any vertebrate. And that's where you get back to proprioception because proprioception is how 
or everything with a nervous system learns to move, is able to move. Mm. Without their nervous system and a, a system of proprioception, movement would not be possible. So we look at all of the ways that proprioception is possible, allows us to move, allows us not just to understand where our body is, but to be able to use that information to make our muscles recruit effectively whenever we need them. And then we reverse engineer that, that information into what are we going to do to help this patient be as strong as they can possibly be. I suppose that's quite important when you look at injury prevention and athletes, especially I mean, if, if that's the kind of patients that you treat, then absolutely it's important. But um, injury prevention, I think, is, is so important to understand. And, and I think that's, that's the nicest thing about this technique, that it, it, it looks at uh, the reason why people are injured in the first place and not just that, oh, well, you have a tendonitis, as, as most patients say. It's understanding why they've got that tendonitis or why they've got that, that muscle weakness. Um, Honestly, the reason for all all injury problems it has to be an inability to withstand an outside force. And if you can just understand that fully and all the ramifications of that, all you need to do is apply an appropriate outside force, one that would be uh, part, part of their daily life. And if that involves Olympic athlete standard, then you have to be able to recreate those forces. And then once you find a deficiency in that function, then you can easily, using the systems that I teach, you can go about fixing that. And and how does that fit into chiropractic? Because as chiropractors, we, t- we typically manipulate the spine, we manipulate dysfunctional joints. And how would how would chiropractic go about using muscle testing to find where best places to, to use to focus treatment and to achieve patient outcomes? Well, the the big revelation about muscle uh, output is that muscle tone, uh, well, uh, efferent output from the central nervous system is determined by sensory input. So everything that happens in your muscles has a sensory precursor to it. And people like to think the brain controls the body, but uh, the central nervous system is sensory driven. And we have to understand that the brain gets all of its raw information from our senses. And most of those senses actually come from our muscles. So the muscle spindle cells are the primary, uh, one of the primary sensory inputs into the brain and central nervous system. And therefore that uh, has effects if those muscles are inhibited by whatever cause and we go through all of the causes of muscle inhibition then uh, the the motor output is affected and so what a chiropractor does then some of the reasons for lack of sensory input can be subluxations mind you subluxations are not necessarily primary so you can end up with inhibition of the spinal rotatory um, muscles and the multifidus and and the spinal stabilizer muscles which create subluxations and so you can actually look with this technique beyond the subluxation itself and think why are people getting these subluxations and then we'll look towards yeah um the 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 actual cause of the subluxation and correcting the subluxation is part of that process too. And so what the technique can do is allow you to really focus in on the primary, I mean, everybody talks about the primary subluxation, but you're talking about being able to just do one or two adjustments per visit and make enormous changes because you're getting to the essence of the patient's problem and you can guarantee your outcome because you've tested it before you actually do the treatment. You yep. know that that adjustment is going to work before you've even done it. And that's the beauty of the system because you, you can know before you actually uh, adjust a patient whether that's the, the correct location, the, the correct side, the correct look, uh, direction of the adjustment. And therefore, you can also measure whether that was an effective intervention. Yeah, and, it, and if it wasn't, you keep going. And if it was, you can stop. And, and it also has a lot to do with safety because the system will tell you whether that correction is going to be harmonious with the body. And, and if it's not, it'll tell you to you know, choose another path. I think that's so important because we, you know, we've all had instances where patients have these flare-ups and it would be really good to avoid those. And I think this technique allows you to identify those individuals and to kind of to, to, mon- to modify your adjusting technique maybe a little bit best to suit those patients. Yeah, we go into a lot of that in the seminars, how to, how to adjust. Um, and that, that's, that's a, a part of the technique. I mean, you can use any technique you want with the system, but um, obviously over the years I've found some techniques work better than others to change the sensory input to the nervous system. And how, how does, what is the reception from your patients? So how do they feel about this muscle testing technique that you use and therefore the adjustments? What is their response to this? Well, they love it. And, and 
they become a they become a big fan really because a the, there's no fatigue or pain involved in anything that we do so the, the adjustments are always comfortable they're never painful and the the muscle testing itself is never fatiguing or tiring or painful so uh but when i test patients that and test other chiropractors who use muscle testing they they're often amazed at how gentle my testing is but actually what i'm really doing is assessing muscle tone and that involves um, maximum com- contraction of the muscles if necessary and uh, I'm, I, and I always or over the years I've developed a series of videos that you can see online there on YouTube um, that show objective evidence that what I'm actually testing is patient's muscle strength. It's uh, There's nothing airy-fairy, there's nothing metaphysical, there's no questioning involved, it's, it's pure um, muscle strength and especially reflex strength that we're looking at because some people might not realize that the ability to go into concentric contraction uh, is a, often a controlled movement. So people don't tend to hurt themselves doing a bench press. They hurt themselves when they're not thinking about a movement. So it's the eccentric loading of a muscle that's the important part uh, for injury prevention. Mm, that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, one of the pause. What has been the response from the chiropractic community? Because you've been doing these seminars for, for quite a time now, uh, for some time, and uh, I know a lot of my colleagues are, are big fans. Um, but what, what has your experience in, in terms of the, the response from the chiropractic community as a whole? Well, I, I think the um, for the people who've done the seminars, it's overwhelming. I mean, it changes their lives. For the people who haven't done it, they're always a bit suspicious because. A, it, it's very holistic. It's not just preaching that if you adjust the subluxation, everything will be okay. I mean, adjustments are still a big part of it, but it, it brings in every aspect of uh, of therapy as well. So it can direct you away from the spine if it needs to, or to the spine if that's what the patient most needs. And and I think that is a little unsettling to chiropractors who just want to um, yeah. go in and crack as many joints as they can. I think that the, those... Those days are a short number, though. I think most chiropractors are understanding that you, you having to think a bit more integrative uh, in terms of patient management outcomes. And I think sure. that, that, that that's that's a good thing about proprioceptive muscle testing is that it does incorporate other areas and not just uh, subluxations. Sure. How long have you been teaching proprioceptive muscle testing for? Um, well, uh, I, uh, from about 2000, the year 2000 was when I really uh, got the theory together and started integrating. I was already teaching the 100-hour AK course, um, but this, what I do now is so different to how you would do AK. For a start, you have to do 100 hours of AK, and we can do this in about 12 so um, it, it really, and the, the reason I can do that is because I only teach principles. I don't teach a bunch of techniques. I, print, I teach some, uh, some principles which you can apply to any situation because they are always applicable. You can always use them. So uh, I, I only teach things that you can, you can always use. And so there's no situation. And that's the, the biggest thing, I think, the biggest advantage of the technique is there isn't any patient that will walk in once you get this on your belt who will walk in and, and, and absolutely flummox you. I mean, there might be one or two, but, but generally you will have the confidence and the tools that you need to handle any clinical situation. So that's a blank canvas for most clinicians to use in terms of to, to develop it. I suppose that this, the, 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 this, the limit is the sky in that respect because there are so many different ways you can test things to find out different ways of fixing things, but using your principles. Yeah, as long as you stick to the principles, okay. you'll, be, you'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, the up-and-coming series that happens in July, tell us a bit more, more about those. Well, um, I, I've invited some of my best students to come along and teach with me for the first time. Uh, originally, I, I just taught by myself, so uh, this is probably the the last time I'll be back in the UK doing these seminars. Um, what I, what we're doing this time is I'm giving all of any, anybody who books on the seminar, I'm giving them my online video se- seminar series. And they will get the chance to go through the notes and the seminars ahead of time. And, and so when they actually get to the workshop, they will have all, all of the theory that they need. And um, we will just be able to concentrate on honing that theory, answering any questions, and then really getting the clinical application of everything up to speed. And so in a day and a half, 
uh, you're going to be have a whole new skill set now. If you feel very, very, very comfortable and don't want to change your existing ways of doing things, you probably won't get much out of this except some good ideas. But if you really uh, um, would like uh, another system, like you maybe think that the, the systems that you're using aren't giving you the results that you'd really like with patients, then this could be a total revelation for you. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. And uh, last question, are there any uh, additional uh, ideas or any additional, um, what's the word, um, any new concepts that are upcoming in the next few series? I've, I've always had a real emphasis on muscle weakness. So my, my primary approach with every patient is find the weakness. And, and that has served me very well. But recently I have been... Uh, working on a complementary approach, which is um, where is the excessive muscle tone? Because once you have excessive muscle tone, you must have, because of the law of reciprocal ambition, you must then have the weakness. So we've been concentrating on the weakness, but I find that using the areas of excessive muscle tone, A, can lead me into weaknesses that I didn't uh, I had missed previously, and there's some really exciting stuff coming up that um, handles very well excessive tension and inflammatory problems in the body that I'm really excited to be uh, to be working on and then showing people when I get to England this time for the first time. Excellent, and I believe your, your seminars are in Cardiff on the 6th and 7th of July, and in Manchester on the 13th and 14th of July. Yep. And then in Berkhamsted the week after that. Um, and people can get to that on Facebook at Expert Muscle Testing or at proprioception.org.uk. Excellent. Simon, thanks so much for your time. Uh, any more questions? Uh, is there an email address they can contact you at? Uh, yes, I think the easiest one is info at tweaks. That's T-W-E-A-K-S dot org dot A-U because I'm in Australia at the moment. So that's tweaks.org.au in, in Australia. Fantastic. Well, it's good to speak to you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in July. Thanks, Jesse. Take See you then. Bye-bye.